title. Now that the ball is going crooked, we need to be able to intercept it. So that means we're going to need another script. So we're going to do that. We're going to call it paddle script. And then we have that, and we can run this. And let's not, uh, let's not forget to apply it to our paddle. Like so. Of course, it doesn't do anything yet. So really, what we want to do is every frame, we want to check to see if the left or right direction is being pushed. And then we move the paddle accordingly. So we're going to have to play around with inputs for the very first time. Now, there's a couple of different ways of doing this. We could check things directly. So if input dot um, get key down, and then you've got your whole key codes by default. I love the autocomplete; very handy. So we want, um, and we definitely want key code dot uh, left arrow. So if the left arrow is down, it'll do something, and then we can test it by doing a debug log left. Switch back over to our program. Check the log. Push this. And let's hit left. There it is. Our debug information works perfectly. Now, at this point, we do have the actual key hard coded in, which, frankly, for these smaller games is perfectly fine. But maybe we want the ability to let the player change their, their key bindings. Unity has that feature built in completely. You don't have to go and create all the GUI from scratch, although you can and you probably will at some point for your final commercial release just to make it blend into the rest of the game. Um, but Unity out of the box controls. It gives you the ability to register various key handlers. And we can find that by going Edit, Project Settings, Input, and looking at the axes. It defines a variety of axes by default. The number of axes are set by the size, so there's 17, which is what you have here. And the one we care about is this horizontal axis. There's a couple of different ways. Jump, for example, is just bound to space. And so we could check just jump very easily by going something like if input dot um, there's a couple of different ways I think we want to go get access probably it's possible that actually get key down to work as well let's let's do a quick test get key down and then just put in a string of jump I believe this will work just as a demo oh no but get access. Yeah, I see. I should know better than to do something on the fly like that. We'll come back to that. But what we really want for the left and right is we actually do want to do a get access, which we pass a string to. Oh, it's get button. That's what I'm doing wrong. Oh, all right, I'll explain in a second. And the horizontal axis. And the advantage of using this this horizontal axis, is this will also work with input from a joystick. If you've got a, let's say, an Xbox 360 controller, which is a USB keypad, uh, and you plugged it into your computer, and when we ran this game, it would also work with your left-right joystick controls, as opposed to just the keyboard controls, which are also bound to the left and right arrow keys, as well as the A and D keys. So now if I hit play, oh, I'm still getting errors because I've left something in, left something out. Close my parentheses. Oh, now that's interesting. Now, I do know get access returns a float because it is a single axis where left is a negative number and right is a positive number. So here we actually want to check to see if the get access horizontal is less than zero, it's going left. And if it happens to be larger than zero, it's going to be right. That should make it happier. There we are. Left, 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 left. And even one little tap of it generates a lot of left messages because it's running at a very high frame rate. If I check the stats right now, um, actually not very high because I'm recording. But normally this should be running at hundreds of frames per second. Such a simple little app. So left and right do both work. The alternative is, that I wasn't doing correctly before, input.getButton which is where we pass a string like jump. And this only returns a Boolean. So if this is true, then the jump button has been pushed. Debug.log. And actually, now that I think about it, I think there's get button and get button. No autocomplete here. Get button down. 
I think get button will just tell you true if it's being pushed down or if it's changed. I'm not certain. Get button down is almost certainly what we want. And what's interesting, the difference between get access and get button down, one of many things, is this will only fire once per entire event. Unless I'm wrong. If I hold down space, yeah, see, I'm holding down space, but it's only triggering the event once. If I let go and hit it again, there we go. And just out of curiosity, if I just say get button, is it the same behavior? No, get button continuously returns true while it's held down. So depending on what you're trying to do, there's two separate behaviors here. Different applications, different usage will use one or the other. So one type of event, get button down or get button up, only happens once. When the state changes, it'll only fire the event one time. But get button will always return true while the button is down. But what we're really concerned with is the left and right movement of our paddle. So there's a couple of different ways we could adjust it. The simplest and most direct way is to take our current transform and translate it. And again, we can. I'm using the up and down arrow keys, by the way, to cycle between these different uh, pop-ups for the help. And this is the sort of variant we want. Basically, we just want to, I don't know, we just want to nudge it to the right. So how much to the right? I don't know. Let's say we want to move at a rate of, uh, I don't know, 10, 10 meters per time unit of some kind. Okay, And only left. Actually, this this would be left, and this would be right. Now, there's a major problem here because this is running every single frame. We're not operating at a fixed frame rate. If you're on a very fast computer, you might get hundreds of frames per second. If you're on a slower computer, you might only get 20 frames per second. Well, on the fast computer, this palette would be so fast, it would be almost uncontrollable. And on a slow computer, it would be incredibly, incredibly slow to move around. Um, what we have to do is we have to multiply our time factor, or our, our speed, by the time since the last frame, which is time.delta frame. Sorry, time.delta time. So in practice, every frame, it's only going to move like 0 0.2 um, units in either direction or something like that, depending on your frame rate. But it means that you will move at a 10f speed constantly in real time. So now let's flip back over. Hope we haven't made a syntax error. Hit play. And now we can move the palette. It's a little wonky. But it's not bad. We've got most of the game. All right, so we don't have points or you know a game over screen or even particularly responsive controls. But it's kind of sort of working. <laughs>